And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in January 21, which will serve as a global summit devoted to the Great Reset. This summit will bring the decision makers physically to Davos, but it will be interconnected with the virtual twin summit driven by the young generation, our global shapers. They will integrate over 400 hubs into the dialogue of Davos and ensure that the Global Reset Initiative is really forward-looking and takes into account the voices of all who are left behind and takes into account the voices of all who are left behind. The voices of all who are left behind. All who are left behind. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. On August 27th, I watched this video in which the World Economic Forum announced their plan for the Great Reset, which they say is now needed because of the effects that the pandemic has had on the world. We know this is all part of the plan, but I would like to highlight how God is speaking to His people, even through the enemy, and when God said He will pour out His Spirit over all flesh, it even includes the flesh of our enemy, and that even they would prophesy so that those who believe would understand. In the clip that I showed at the start of this video, Klaus Schwab, the president of the World Economic Forum, states that when this organization convenes again in January of next year, that they will consider the voices of all those who are left behind. Now for those who are watching and who heard what was said in the statement, I should immediately bring to mind Acts 2 verse 17. If this is from God, then we should also know that by January next year, there will be many who will know that they were left behind. This is not the only aspect that caught my attention in the call between those who are used by our enemy to carry out his plans. One of the keynote speakers was Victoria Alonso Perez, an electronics engineer from Uruguay who heads up a company that is called Chip Safer. So what is this all about and why would Victoria, who is the CEO of this company, have been selected to be a keynote speaker on this call with the World Economic Forum? Chip Safer provides solutions to farmers who want to monitor their livestock but there is more to this than meets the eye at first glance. When we look at the About section on their website, this is what we see. ChipSafer is a platform that can track and detect anomalies in livestock behavior at any time and place with the aim of isolating the outbreak of such anomalies as soon as possible. So the idea is to have information about all animals in the farmer's herd available including each animal's position and specifically their behavior and these being continuously monitored and sent to HQ for processing and analysis. This is interesting because we also know that those who consider themselves the elite and who follow after the God of this world view the ordinary citizen as cattle or sheep labeled as useless eaters. And when we consider what the Bible tells us, we understand why there is so much emphasis and comparison with livestock when it comes to these issues. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. The Bible explains that we are God's cultivation and His building, whether we are referred to as His sheep belonging to one of His harvests, or being His temple, and these concepts are absolutely essential to understand if we want to correctly understand the order that is associated with the resurrection of the dead that will soon come into view. When we study this a little deeper, we discover a great amount of detail and instructions on how the harvesting process should be conducted. In 1 Corinthians 15, we are told that Jesus was the first fruits of a harvest and of those that will be resurrected from the dead. And when we are dealing with a harvest, there are always three portions. The first fruits, that portion that the owner will gather into his barn, and a final portion which is known as the gleanings or the corners of the harvest that will be handed over to the poor and the stranger as their legal possession. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. This order that Paul is speaking of is provided to us in detail in Leviticus 23. 
Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. Jesus perfectly fulfilled this instruction when he was resurrected with the twenty-four elders or Old Testament believers mentioned in Hebrews 11. And what happens to the rest of the harvest is explained to us next. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You can be assured that Jesus will keep to the instructions provided in the word of God in respect to the harvest that he represents the first fruits of, and that when he gathers in those that belong to him, he will also leave the corners of his harvest behind to be handed over to the poor and the stranger. I am not going to go into the details of this again, as there is a five-part series that I did in which I point out how the harvest and temple models apply to believers in Christ. And if you have not considered this information yet, I would urge you to do so in the little time that remains. What I would like to point out is that these references to God's people being cattle by the enemy simply confirms to us what we are shown in the word of God, and that the enemy is getting ready to take possession of what will be handed over to him. However, the fact that the owner of the field is not gathered in what belongs to him yet, also prevents or restrains the poor and the stranger from taking possession of what will eventually become their legal possession. Once this happens, Satan will receive authority over the gleanings of God's harvest, and would at all costs want to prevent any of that portion to remain holy to God, because the Bible specifically provides instructions on how those who have become the gleanings of God's faith harvest, who have been sanctified by the first fruits, and who have become the property of a new owner, can escape a situation in which they become the permanent property of that new owner. The gleanings of a harvest cannot be redeemed a second time since they are already holy to God, because the first fruits sanctifies the entire harvest. Leviticus 27 contains the escape plan. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord of all that he hath, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. None devoted which shall be devoted of men shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. The only way to escape becoming the new owner's permanent property will be through death as one sanctified by the first fruits and having the image of God in one's DNA. We see this law that was given in Leviticus applied in Revelation. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. For those who find themselves in the tribulation, this will be the only way to remain holy to God, and that will be to lay down their lives, and to refuse the alternative, which would be becoming the permanent property of Satan. In this regard, I think it is also very important to understand that once saved, always saved, will certainly not apply to believers during the tribulation. Please understand when I say this, that I believe salvation is only obtained through faith alone, in Jesus alone, and it is a gift of God through His grace alone. However, the Bible is very clear about the fact that any person who accepts the mark of the beast in their bodies, whether they are saved or unsaved, will receive God's eternal wrath. This is why I believe the once saved, always saved doctrine is so dangerous, because it will give many believers during the tribulation a false confidence of assured salvation even if they accepted the mark of our enemy in their bodies. But please consider what the word shows us, and not what men's doctrine would have us believe. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 
and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The words any man and whosoever that are used in this passage to refer to people who accept the enemy's mark in their bodies make no distinction between those who are saved or who have come to salvation and the unsaved. If we tell people that once they are saved that their salvation is assured and cannot be undone and those who find themselves in the tribulation go ahead renouncing their faith in Jesus and accepting the mark of the beast in their bodies believing that they cannot lose their salvation will step into a trap that was set for them by their fellow believers. And those who have deceived them in light of what was written in Revelation 14 will be held accountable for those people who will become Satan's everlasting property based on this teaching. In Revelation 3, 6 and 20 we clearly see how there are none who have accepted the mark of the beast in their bodies who are raised to rule with Christ for a thousand years and that those who become part of his temple during the tribulation will all be expected to lay down their lives refusing to accept the mark of the beast and worshipping of the beast. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I saw throngs, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. From these passages it should be clear that a person who has received salvation through faith in Jesus will lose their salvation if they accept the mark of the beast in their bodies, because it will remove God's image from their DNA, and Jesus only provides salvation to people who were made in his image. When we understand that we are God's cultivation, then it becomes a lot clearer why the CEO of Chip Cipher was selected for being part of this WEF call, when we consider how the soon coming second harvest event will affect the world. Our enemy is getting ready to take possession of that portion that will be handed over to him, but only when the owner of the harvest gathers in his portion first. Before the owner harvests his portion, even the gleanings are protected under the owner's authority, and the enemy would become guilty of a crime if he started the gleaning process before the owner gathered in what belongs to him. Once the gleanings are handed over, our enemy will then do his best to apply as much control over his possession as possible. And this is where the draconian technology comes in. If you combine the devices that are sold by Chip Safer with the patent that Bill Gates' company took out in March this year, you can see how people will not only be tracked and their behavior monitored, but that an entire economy will be brought about surrounding these aspects. If we look at the patent that Bill Gates took out in March, the following is shared with us. Human body activity associated with a task provided to a user may be used in a mining process of a cryptocurrency system. A server may provide a task to a device of a user which is communicatively coupled to the server. A sensor communicatively coupled to or comprised in the device of the user may sense body activity of the user. Body activity data may be generated based on the sensed body activity of the user. The cryptocurrency system communicatively coupled to the device of the user may verify if the body activity data satisfies one or more conditions set by the cryptocurrency system and award cryptocurrency to the user whose body activity data is verified. Can you see how what we read in Revelation is becoming evident in the plans of our enemy? 
If you do not make your body part of this cryptocurrency system, you will simply not be able to earn a living or to take part in the economy. It goes even further than this. On August 28th, Elon Musk revealed the progress on their Neuralink initiative. And this is a device that currently requires 1024 electrodes to be inserted into the user's brain and which can communicate via Bluetooth to the user's phone. It does not only have the capability of reading electrical impulses in the brain, but it can also write impulses back to the brain. Now imagine the dangers if some artificial intelligence that Elon Musk himself has warned about takes over control of these devices implanted into people's brains and affect their thoughts and actions. And this would seem to hint at what Revelation is also referring to in chapter 16. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Once a person becomes the legal property of the enemy, they will be under full control of the enemy in this new dispensation and will be unable to oppose the control even with their own thoughts because they will be instructed by the enemy what to think and what to do. I would next like to look at more confirmation of visions and dreams that the Lord has put before me and would also like to thank those subscribers who have pointed out some of these correlations. In a previous video I pointed out how Lee from Liverpool had a dream about the USA being split into two after an impact event and how this crack will extend roughly from New Orleans to Oregon. I came across another video that was sent to me by Rich777 in which a nine-year-old boy saw a very similar vision of what is coming and amazingly the same crack that Lee saw over the USA. In addition he also saw some other information which Lee did not see which contributes to our understanding of what was shown. Please listen to the following. And the Lord gave me this image. Uh, it was the word New Orleans it flashed three times. One, two, three. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. And then the word exploded into pieces. And I was like, Lord, what does that even mean? How am I supposed to give that as a, as a, as a, um, as a message? You know, who's going to understand that? Just that New Orleans, the word New Orleans exploding. So, it came back again, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, and then a ram, a, like, no, a horned sheep, head button, the, the word New Orleans, and then it exploded, and I'm like, Lord, this is still, doesn't make any sense to me, can you please give me more information? So he gave me it again. It was New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. The ram came, buttered the word, the word exploded. A picture of the United States came up like this. And a big crack from New Orleans went right the way up on a diagonal. Uh, so it'll be New Orleans is east, isn't it? So east, so east, so southeast, all the way across the country to northwest, right the way across. And the country split in two. The Lord showed me uh, New Mexico and it explodes as well. But that's all he gave me. He didn't give me anything else. So I've, put, I've just put a cross through New Mexico because I'm not sure what's supposed to happen there. However, this is what I've seen. Bring it closer so you can all see. So Louisiana down here where New Orleans would be and it goes right the way up. From north, east, south, west, southwest to north, sorry, south, north, east, southeast to northwest. It split and then it opens up. It just separated and then the, the, that, that middle fills up with water. Okay. So once I was sitting in my bed, I was dreaming, I was just close my eyes and I was dreaming about stuff. Was you asleep? No, I was not asleep. I was, I was, and then I just looked at this image that popped in my head, and it was like Earth. It was Earth. I was standing in space. You know what I mean? Standing in space, and I was, and it was like I saw this little curve because I knew it was Earth, because I saw all the countries. And then there was this asteroid coming towards Earth. Okay, so you were out here in space, looking down. Down at Earth. And so it was sphere of the earth mm -hmm. so that's proven earth is round 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And then it, and it was like this asteroid coming towards Earth. And as soon as I saw it, it hit Earth's, Earth's curve right there. It kind of hit. I didn't see it explode, but it hit somewhere around here. And then I and then I just like popped out of my head, and then I was like, oh my gosh, that was such a weird image I just popped in my head. Was and it scary? It, yeah, it kind of was scary because it was like flaming hot red, and then it was like cre it's kind of creepy. Oh my goodness. Okay, it yeah. Was scary. All right. What? Um. Okay. So you 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 saw. Let's see. Let me see. You saw this is an asteroid. Yes, ma'am. And you saw this coming down. Mhm. Mm and when it got about here, it popped out of my head. Popped out of your head. Okay. And but you saw it coming. You knew it was going to hit here. What is this? What are we looking at here? What is all this? So we're basically looking at like... Here. Like... So you can see the X's are asteroids. So and the, plus, and the pluses are nukes. Well, bombs. And, and then it's like cracks. And then what I saw was it was going towards Earth. Mm -hmm. And then I knew it was going to break. I knew. So it's one asteroid that busted. Yes, and it, these are all the places that the, the little pieces of the asteroid they're going to hit. Okay, so pretty much close to the ocean. Yes. So we're looking, there's an X there. X here. So all this is pretty much close to the ocean area that it's going to burst and yes. fall close. Yes. Okay, but this... Are, these are pluses, and these are right here, right? Bombs. Yes. Okay, so you saw that too? Yes, I did. It was like from at coming, the like, same time. They, yes, they were coming from here, all around the Earth, coming towards this way, and that way, and it was like I don't know, crazy, crazy, and they were like wars, like shooting nukes all over, all over across the ocean, hitting all over the place. And then there was this giant, that asteroid I told you about. And then, yeah. Wow. They were all exploding. Okay, what are these, uh, where, where did this come from? Uh, where did that come from? In way scarier. <laughs> so what happened, see, see, I don't, I don't know if that, this is cotton is called, but th this, you know, this division sign? Yeah tables it was very weird it was lava and there were like people giant people that had goat horns kind of. giant like. people with goat horns yes and then it was like they were walking all over the place and it was like lava all over the place it was creepy oh my oh my goodness okay giant people with goat horns yes it looked like regular humans but they were much darker much Fierce, like strong, strong, and they were like scary. Okay, and you saw them walking on this yes. earth at the same time you saw this asteroid, yes. and at the same time I saw you all saw this at the same time. Oh, okay, was this in color or? Yes, it was in color. Okay, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, or oh, oh, let me ask you this: what this is cracks? Okay, I'm seeing some cracks. Now, what if, what is it about? There were cracks that were like, where the pieces of the countries were separating. Oh, Lord. And it was like, Jesus. coming apart, and then it was like, breaking apart. Oh, like Lord Jesus, shaking, help them. and then it was like, pulling apart, and then, and then like, there was a giant crack in the middle of America, and then it was very scary, because pieces were like, People were, like, I think falling in the cracks or something, and then it was, like, pulling apart. You saw this all at one yes. time. Yes, and it, I, don't, I don't, it was creepy. You will notice that in both visions, the crack over the USA is exactly the same. And in both visions, an impact event would seem to be responsible for what happens. Also, please listen to what Lee had to say in this clip. 
regarding the dark people that was also shown to this nine-year-old boy back in 2017. Um, and we're defending this out our, our house from these people and they were all black. There, there was not any other color in them. These people, every single one of them, from head to toe, was completely black. You couldn't see eyes, you couldn't see their mouth, you couldn't see their nostril, their ear, everything was pitch black, dark, darker than uh, the darkest soil, as an example. Blacker than the blackest black, colour black. That, the, the, like you look at your TV screen as an example, when it's turned off, it's black, isn't it? That, that's what they look like, they were all black. If they'd have stood against the black wall, you wouldn't have been able to see them. Um, so, I, I believe that these were um, genetically genetic hybrids. Um, don't ask me how I know that, I just know it. Um, for me spirit, I know that they were genetic hybrids, um, and they were tra they were they were trained to specifically kill Christians and chase them down. Um, the next the next virus is going to be leaked into the water supply from this place from this place. And I was like, how do you know that? I mean, how are we supposed to? You know, we all need to drink water. You know, and he goes, no. It's like we'll we'll um. We'll use my filtration systems to filter it out, and then we'll boil it extra, extra, and then we'll have our water. He said, but the, the new virus, the new virus is going to be coming through the water system. Um, and then we looked around, and in this room were all these test subjects that have been given this virus, and they had all like these black veins, um, all these black, like, you know, like the way when, uh, when, when you like slap your, slap your arm like that, and your veins pop out and they're a little bit blue. Well, they, all, they you could see all their veins and it was they were black. All these vein, black veins going all the way up their arms. You could see you know, they had any t-shirts or anything on or shirts. And you could see it all going down, their, all the veins in their body. They were all black. Their eyes were glazed over black as well. Like They look like zombies. Um, anyway, this alarm started going off. Um, and uh, there was an, an outbreak of these people that had escaped. And uh, this man came over with like this big crate of, uh, of armory and he started throwing us rifles and he said there's been a breach, there's been a breach, there's been a breach, the zombies have escaped, the zombies have escaped. And um, so we were like, right, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to keep the locals um, safe. So we, we went off and we, we were chasing these zombies down and they, we were shooting them. No matter how many times we shot them, they didn't die. Even in the head, they didn't die. They stayed alive. Um, and that, that, that was my dream. These dark people with goat horns coming out of the earth who cannot die appear on the earth at the time of this impact event and the Bible also clearly point us to the timing of this event and that it aligns with our Redeemer returning to gather in His harvest. Please consider the following passages. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for He is raised up out of His holy habitation. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth. Selah. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. From these passages we see that the earth will be quiet and still, just as it is now, when God will be raised up out of his holy habitation to judge the earth. However, we are also shown that he will first save the meek, and keep those who kept the word of his patience from the hour of temptation, before the judgment begins. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, 
I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. In these days it is so important to have the correct understanding of God's word, and it really saddens me to see how so many people cling to the doctrines of men, instead of reading the word of God for themselves, to see if what they are told is indeed true. The only way in which we can obtain understanding is to consider everything written to us in the word of God, not leaving out a single word from any verse in any chapter contained in the supernatural book. That is how you obtain the truth. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. We know that the word of God shows us that all that are in the graves will be brought back to life when the trump of God is sounded, and when God shoots his arrow or asteroid at the world. Please consider what we are shown in the following passages. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, I have previously pointed out that when the trump of God is sounded, it will not only be the dead in Christ who will be raised back to life, but also those who have died in their sins. I believe this is why Paul says that the dead in Christ will rise first, because once the rapture occurs, those who have died without Christ will rise second, but being brought back to life in the same hour. I have done a two-part series on this back in 2019, and I would also urge you to watch this if you have not seen this yet because everything that the Bible is showing us is also being shown to people through dreams and visions that align with what is written, and that is why we know these dreams and visions are indeed from God. But even the enemy knows what is coming, and I would like to point out the following two videos in which we see how the enemy is more informed than many of God's people about the timing of these events. In the first example from this episode of The Simpsons, we see how an asteroid is on its way to the Earth, after an EMP attack, and on it are a lot of dead people that have come to life, showing us that our enemy knows that the dead will be coming back to life at the time of this asteroid impact, which also represents the arrow that God will shoot in judgment at the world for dividing his land and breaking the everlasting land covenant with Abraham. What's W-R-O-L? It means without the rule of law, anarchy, the end of civilization. Coming soon to an America near you. America can't collapse. We're as powerful as ancient Rome. Homer, meet the Springfield Preppers. What would you do in the case of an EMP? Electromagnetic pulse. A burst of radiation that knocks out every electrical system in the country. Impending doom. What you reading, Dad? <laughs> Honey, everything's fine. There's nothing to worry about. When things go south, the sheeple will clean out every supermarket in town. Typical sheeple. So, what have you learned so far from our post-apocalyptic movie marathon? Guys who call themselves preacher or deacon are very bad. Water is money, unless gasoline is money. And even though lots of things are razor sharp, no one ever shaves. Hollywood has taught you well, my son. Here it is, Homer. The Springfield Preppers' top secret bug out retreat. Wow! Your end of the world is better than my during the world. Homer, we all know America's collapse is about three months away. Six weeks at most. There's always one alarmist. Anyway, when the four horsemen ride, we want you and your collaterals right here with us. Hidden all our supplies behind a fake wall. I thought the basement looked cleaner. 
See? These are our bug out bags. In here is everything we need to survive. Survive what? The looming kablooey. It's reassuring to see you're aware of the future, but this is all a little creepy. Creepy? March, the apocalypse is coming. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe never. But it's coming. And soon. I'm going to bed. <gasps> An EMP? You know what that means. Hand scissors. Look, you can have potato chips now, or if you wait ten minutes, you can have all the brains you can eat. I want both! Ugh. Then we have this music video from the group BTS, which shows us how a war occurred, and peace would have been removed from the Earth at this time. This would match what we read in Revelation 6. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the Earth and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Next we see Satan, whose hands are tied by a crown of thorns, being cast out of heaven, and running away from a great city with his hands still being tied, and this aligning with what we read in the following passages. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then we have this scene where we see an ark with animals, and this pointing us to the scripture where Jesus said that in the days of the Son of Man, it will once again be as in the days of Noah. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and the flood came, and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in Genesis we are also told about the Nephilim that was on the earth during those days when fallen angels produced offspring by mixing their seed with that of man. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Continuing with what we are shown in this music video, we see this person with black veins in his neck, just as seen by Lee in the vision that he had, and the dark people with goat horns that the nine-year-old boy saw, but this once again pointing us to the resurrection of the dead and the Nephilim being back on the earth when the resurrection of the dead occurs. We then see Satan's restraints being removed and this being associated with the sound of a trumpet. <laughs> This is followed by a storm and darkness descending on the earth. This is then followed by a party where those who are in darkness will get their time of unrestrained rule over the earth. And here we see again what would look like objects similar to meteors or asteroids impacting the earth. Finally we see how an opening is made in a large barrier which would point me to a dimensional gateway that will open and allow Satan and those that are with him through into our space-time reality and we see this referenced in Revelation 6. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. 
and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Finally, we see how these people that entered through the gate climb a high rock or a tower, just as in the days of Babel, convincing themselves that they can be as God, which of course was the first lie with which the father of lies deceived the world with and caused humanity to fall into sin. And they said, Go to, let us build a city, and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. It would seem that our enemy has a very good understanding of the events that will soon transpire as well as the timing that is associated with these, and that his Bible knowledge is indeed commendable. At the same time, there are so many of God's children who simply have no idea of what will soon be happening on the earth, and who will be caught by surprise because they did not search out to understand what the Word of God has to say about his harvest and his building and how these are connected to the resurrection of the dead and the time that will soon be upon us. Well, that is all for today. I am working on another video in which I will look at what roles prophecies, dreams and visions play in our lives and why it is important to pay attention to these. But I will also look at God's clear warning to us that relates to the Revelation 12 sign and how this is associated with the Church of Ephesus and finally the dangers associated with the new doctrine of rightly dividing the Word of God by those who want believers only to focus on Paul's epistles and to view the rest of what was written in the Bible as intended for Israel only. There is a great danger, in my opinion, when people approach the Word of God in this way. The Bible says that if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will receive salvation. Have you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God? Have you placed all of your trust in Him to save you from your sins? Jesus shed His precious blood on the cross to set you free from sin, and your sins being washed away and you becoming a fellow heir with Christ as a son or daughter of God is a free gift to anyone who will accept. The only way in which you can obtain this gift is through faith. You cannot earn it, and you cannot pay God back for it once you have it. Would you not accept His gift of eternal life to you today, while there is still time to do so? Do not trust in your own works to save you, even if those works are the works that you do under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will receive all the glory for every person that He saved, and we can only offer Him our gratitude and worship. Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped. A crown made of thorns pressed into his head. Bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered up the hill to Golgotha. Each step of the journey getting worse, spit on, cursed, and mocked. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket, our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. God hears you and he is answering your prayer. The love of God is being poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Thank you.